What's happened in the LCV market and what, what, what are you seeing? Because you mentioned before there's a few more coming on. Is it from a supply and also from a pricing perspective and a condition? So there were some real challenges with a lot of those, you know, there's not too many bad LCVs out there these days in terms of utes. It's a very competitive space. A lot of them just about, I think, are all five-star rated so they can all work mine sites if they really need to and the like. So really competitive space. There was some particular production challenges that they had um, and, and I think that's all n- not as much of an issue now, but every one of our big fleet customers has a lot of um, exposure to the LCV market. I think we're probably overrepresented from an LCV mix of what we would see just due to the, the, the makeup of customers that we have and our, and our customers, the fleet companies have. So compared to what might be you know um, sold from a, at, a, at a BFAX level. So we've got a lot a lot coming through, um, but uh, and and so the, the prices on those have actually come down faster than than the passenger cars and the SUVs in particular, or the, um, in particular. So, and I think that's just due to uh, you're right, Mark. The the way in which the you know there's more kilometres on them. They're often workhorses, right? So the, the typical five year one twenty k Hilux Ranger. Etc. is probably now more like closer to six and a half, seven, or closer to two hundred thousand kilometers, and so there's a fair amount of that volume that's come through, which has often got a bit more unfair wear and tear, and they do a bit more love. So that the trade when they're looking at them, they're being a bit more selective, I suppose, before they're buying them, and because they do need a, a bit of work, and even just some of that, you know, in a lot of states we're hearing just getting panel repair done and the like, you know, um, getting. Everyone's having trouble recruiting staff left, right, and center in whatever industry. But you know, and parts supply is still a challenge in some of those areas as well. So I think that's part of it too. Is is the trade when they're looking at them a bit more selective around what they want to pay for those assets. So um, and there's just a, a bit more of volume there. So therefore, it ha- it's it's probably magnified the reduction in the LCV area. So uh, w- it'll probably take it. it it's probably dep- it'll it's certainly depreciating faster. We think that area will probably get back to the, the the normal you know normal pricing um and I'll talk about normal pricing in, in a sec if you like um in the future um at faster than say SUV and and, and passenger we, we've sort of put a bit of a stake in the ground we feel like the, the the used car market's going to normalize itself in about the end of 2024 um we feel like that's going to be about 10 to 15 percent higher than COVID though we could see pre even pre COVID from 2016 17 onwards used car prices. Were, 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 were growing. There was a trend of them heading north Our, um, with RRP, RRP increases, more tech, you know, um, more more innovation and, and the like coming in, into cars. And we could just see, and, and with 2017 being the, the highest used vehicle record, vehicles on record, albeit 2023 is probably going to beat it, um, the, the, the used car car park was, was at that point shrinking because there wasn't as many new cars coming in in 18, 19, 20. And therefore, uh, we could. That was another compounding factor that, that, with that used car market drinking, it was putting pressure on used car prices heading north. So, we, we feel like um, prices will level out um, at about the end of twenty four, uh, and about ten to fifteen percent higher than what they were pre COVID. 